Now, for the latest report, as part of Channel 4's Fake News Week, one movement which has fueled and been fueled by fake news is the so-called alternative or alt-right. Many say it is just relabeling for the far right. It's a term which encompasses a range of often young, right-wing speakers and bloggers. Some have become notorious for their views on race, religion, gender. Many in America also helped promote fake news about President Trump's election opponents. Inevitably, the so-called alt-right has attracted supporters here. Channel 4 News has been hearing from some of them. They disagree about what the movement actually stands for and they don't all share the same extreme views. But they're united in believing that Western culture is under threat. And a warning, this film does contain words and symbols you may find offensive. The left is dead. We are winning. We've worked hard for this for years. We're finally getting there. Trump is our mascot. Trump is someone who we put our faith into. That's the job of the old fight, bringing that cultural influence into politics. Oh, the old right. Well, um, I see us pretty much everywhere I go on the internet. The umbrella term is for anyone that's against white people being replaced in their own nations. But it's a general term that covers a lot of things. How long ago do you consider yourself left-wing? I'd say it was probably a year ago when I was still uh, wearing my Rage Against the Machine t-shirts and things. So, um, <laughs> but, but um, at first I refused to even watch the videos because I said I don't want to listen to a racist <laughs> because I, uh, I was narrow-minded. I was like watching the videos around a January, February time last year, and by April, I'd made like a full conversion. I felt like I was stumbling onto this, this huge monumental truth, and I was like, I couldn't just uh, resist the urge. When I was growing up, like, all I've known is middle class, very liberal. Um, I've always been surrounded by the same people. My whole family, like, like even my grandparents, that were left wing, would we're a Brighton family. Now I'm the editor-in-chief of a right-wing website. I think my parents think that I don't understand, that I'm ignorant, and that I've got a lot of growing up to do. Do they know about everything? Do they know about the website? No. I don't know. <laughs> no. I consider myself a feminist, but that was the point where I kind of like started, like, Googling, like, other things. I came across a video by Paul Joseph Watson, um, and I watched it, and I was like, hang on a second. Like, that, that's what I think. Do other people think the same as me? Um, what was the video? Um, I think it was about Islamophobia and how it's not a thing. I started reading Breitbart and like found other YouTubers and you know found my people so to speak. I was about uh, 16, 15 so it was, they, um, they got to me quite young so to speak. <laughs> I'm primarily a libertarian but I sympathize with the alt-right happens on the internet, in forums, in Reddit, 4chan, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, that's where all the discussion is, that's where all the debate is, that's where all the, um, the fun is, basically, the, the entertainment, so to speak. It's, it's a, the amazing thing the alt-right has done is it's fused politics, culture and entertainment in one. You know, it allows you to be a, a Nazi frog on Twitter and troll you know, conservatives who are completely outraged by this. But it's so fun to, to witness the outrage of socialists and leftists and, and conservatives. I started off in the BNP and I uh, was contacted by Paul West and Liberty GB and I've been doing that ever since. And we stood for election in Batley and Spen. As Islam becomes a more dominant force in the UK, we are going to see more children being gang raped, we're going to see more beheadings on the street, we're going to see more terrorism, and a total destruction of Britain's cultural identity. So the alt-right started around 2008, 2009. I've kind of been on the edges of it because I've never bought into absolutely everything. I, I consider myself just a conservative. I don't, I don't think I'm radical. 
the alt-right's a little bit more radical. Congratulations, Donald Trump, and congratulations, everyone else. You know, we've worked hard for this for years, and uh, we're finally getting there. The, the politics have changed drastically, and that's just because the culture's changed uh, as well. There's a great phrase that some people use, it's like, we, we've memed this world into life, you know. But it's gone from being an internet movement to a wider movement of people who went out and voted. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a winning strategy, and uh, I, I want to get in on that. Yeah, I've got a ton of uh, stuff going on here. Yeah. What do your friends and family think about your beliefs? My family think it's dangerous. My white friends don't quite know. Um, my friends of other races, I've had to speak to them about it because I think it's a concern that we're It's all our concern. But for now, I need to keep my, my identity secret until I've at least got some people in my personal life that understand my, understand my qualms. I just sort of started seeing how the world's been changing over the past year, and I thought, I don't want this future. I don't want my children to grow up, or my, my future children to grow up a minority in their country. It doesn't mean I hate any other group. I don't hate any other group. I just believe that every group has its own rights and that white people's needs and rights need to be respected like every other group. And is the alt-right helping? Helping? Oh, oh, yeah, it's helping because it's helping ensure that there could be a future rather than, rather than my people being erased. But are you verifying the stuff that you see on YouTube? Well, I can make up my mind from it. I could, but basically, are you fact-checking it? Yes, some of it. You can't constantly fact check everything you see, that's rather tedious, but yeah, there's a lot of it that... <sighs> Do you fact check everything you see on the mainstream media? How do you guys know each other and how come you're friends? Um, we met through college, but we weren't friends immediately. How come? <laughs> you thought I was racist. <laughs> I'd, I'd send him videos that he's hooked on now and he'd say, stop sending me your racist videos and things like that. He was a socialist. Yeah. And what changed? I helped him see the light. <laughs> In terms of the, the alt-right, I'd say, I'd, I try to like not class myself as a member. What people don't understand is that it's, it's a very flexible term. Like, <clears throat> very uneager to identify as alt-right because, because it's like, because you of the, the stigma. No, I'd call myself a proud boy, a Western chauvinist. I'd call myself a conservative, a libertarian, a paleo-conservative. I'd never call myself alt-right because I just don't care about hating Jews and white supremacy. The bell curve is, as I'll show you, it's the idea that that there's a, the average IQ is 100 and there are as many people on this side, on the, on the quote unquote, the dumb side as on the intelligent side. But this is, for example, the one for white people, but the one for, uh, for, for example, blacks, as the book describes, is sort of more over here. There's still a bell curve, but there's a smaller one, and it's slightly shifted. And is this popular reading in the alt-right? Uh, this is definitely required reading if you want to be alt-right. You know, this is what you have to know, that there's a difference in IQ between uh, blacks and whites, or the Mexicans and... It's just a theory. There's no science behind that. No science? Well, I would uh, certainly disagree. Now, these are scientific psychological studies. <laughs> we come on to uh, Mein Kampf. Um, I simply believe that you know, if you like history, even just this is you should read this because this is the, probably one the, the important book of the 20th century. Even if you're not alt-right, you should have read this. Uh, but how do the ideas of Hitler fuse into the alt-right? Um, they see him as the, you know, as the, the, uh, the archetype of, of a person who, sh who they should be. You know, just like uh, maybe, say, Muslims see Muhammad as the archetype of a Muslim. Uh, they see Hitler and, and Nazi Germany as how the world should be. But that's, that's, that's more extreme strands of the alt-right, but still that strand is, a, is probably the biggest strand of it. Um, Does that bother you? Mm, certainly to an extent as a poll, that kind of on a, on a, even a personal level should. But my hatred of communism is still bigger than my hatred of, you know, for example, uh, Germ Nazi Germany. How do you feel about the accusation that the alt-right is racist? It's true. It, it's simply true. 
you can't get around it. Um, uh, I'm necessarily not necessarily a particular advocate of that. How can you get past it? I guess uh, because it's such a large crowd, it's such a di actually ironically diverse group of people that uh, a libertarian can find his place among it. You have all these soft-spoken intellectuals on the internet who are called Nazis, and it's nonsense. Uh, they're ordinary people who just have perhaps uh, slightly controversial views. Even very moderate people are called like things like that. Like Milo Yiannopoulos, kind of... Um, Is he a moderate? He's, yeah, he's very moderate. He's been called far right. And he's like a liberal, a like classic liberal. But he's been called far right. That's nonsense. People like me are far right, good heavens. You have to look at where it goes. And where does this stuff so. go? Oh, come on. Are you seriously suggesting that people pontificating on the internet leads to, you know, stamping down people's doors? No, it's nonsense. That's total nonsense. We're not young people who don't know what we're doing. Um, you know, this isn't like a phase or whatever. Like, we genuinely want to kind of like make it all shiny and new. It's coming off the internet and people are meeting up in person more and more. And uh, eventually they, they'll get together and it won't be what you'd expect. Like most of these people are very unstereotypical. They're not like the sort of people you find on uh, EDL marches or BMP marches. I don't, I don't care about race. Um, I honestly don't. I care about um, Europe's culture being snowed under by multiculturalism. Years ago, I was terrified of being called a racist. It was like the worst thing ever. And now it's so many of us get called racist, we just go, all right, fine, whatever, call me racist. Maybe I'm a racist. No, I don't care. If, if being racist, if what I say is racist to all these people, then fine, call me racist. We're all looking at America in sort of glee and hope. You know, so we're, we're hoping that that success translates into, for example, Le Pen in France, or Alternative for Deutschland, or the Swedish Democrats. Uh, as one of my friends said, your politics has ended. Mine has just begun. Well, Jack Buckby is the co-founder of a new right-wing magazine. You've just seen him in that piece. Barbara Ntumi is a political activist from the NUS Black Students' Campaign. And from Dublin, we have Angela Nagel, who's an expert in this area and has written about online culture wars. Uh, Angela, there have always been angry people who didn't like immigrants or hated Jews or hated Muslims, um, but there were a relatively small number of them, so they didn't really matter. What we see now is this uh, sort of radicalisation of young people on the internet. Does this make them losers with laptops or a political movement? Well, there are multiple layers of it, and this is one of the things that makes it very difficult to talk about because, uh, for example, Milo Yiannopoulos, who's mentioned, is very different politically to the, the hard core of the alt-right, uh, which is a very American phenomenon and which does have explicitly racial uh, politics. Um, so it's quite a long journey from that hardcore of the alt-right to, for example, um, the average Trump voter. Uh, so in a way, um, you know, I wouldn't want to in any way underestimate uh, it as a movement because it is a kind of avant-garde, uh, even so it, the fact that it's small doesn't matter too much. Um, but it certainly is going to be very culturally influential and already has been. Um, Jack Buckby, you stood for election, you got 220 votes. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a few thousand Twitter followers. Sure. I mean... There have always been people like you, haven't there? I mean, mm. is there anything new about what you're doing? No, I wouldn't say there's anything new, but I'd say definitely the, the way that we go about politics has changed. Um, you know, my, my election campaign, uh, you know, if we're going to talk about that, was primarily to cause a discussion about what, uh, what I believe was a serious issue in the area, which has 
you know, we, we've seen is a serious but, issue. But nobody agreed improving. with you is the point. I mean, well, no, you know, I don't, I don't, you've got 1.1% of the vote. Yeah, I so, know. I don't think that's true. I mean, I'm from a very small political party with a very small amount of funding. The point yeah. was never to win. So not no. many people think the way you do. See, I point. disagree with that. You know, we had 4 million people voting for UKIP, and many of those agree with me. You know, I don't associate with this fringe of the alt-right, which is, you know, neo-Nazi, white, uh, you know, white supremacist kind of thing. But these 4 million UKIP voters agree with many of the kind of ideas that I talk about. I know a lot of people who are high up in UKIP who agree with me on almost all things. And I know many Tory voters and many traditional Labour voters believe the same as well. So what we've seen is it doesn't work out in politics, but it is creating a new online culture. Barbara and Toomey, I mean, can you afford to ignore him? I, I've never said that we should ignore people like Jack, to be honest. I am actively campaigning and will continue to ignore people, um, to campaign against people like Jack and the views that he stands for. I think it's absolutely despicable that you can sit here and basically spout these things that basically infringe on the rights of other people to just exist in society. It's ridiculous. Like, you're able to exist and be you, but yet your whole movement and your whole thing is about how you know, for some reason, black people have low IQs. I mean, he's proven that there's no actual biological difference between black and white people. That's a myth. That's pseudoscience from the 1800s that you keep bringing back. So I'm just completely astonished somebody's well educated that you, you know, chooses to believe such nonsense. Kind well, of I'd, I'd, I'd love to know where you got this information from because I, I, don't, I don't believe those things that you're But you have about. said people they, should be deported, haven't you? Uh, yes, people who are a drain on the, on the economy, absolutely, yes. What, any, so white people as well? So, so who well, we gets can't to define anybody who's, who's right. a drain on the economy? No, 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 no. Who gets who gets to decide who's who a drain? Oh, we, so black people who were born here, they can Excuse stay, me. right? Yes, absolutely. Is that OK? Yes. Right, so who gets to define who's no, a drain on society? No, I love this society? sort of faux outrage you've no, no, got no, going no on here. You know, you're saying, oh, you hate black people. You don't I think people should that. exist. I, I absolutely didn't say that. It's not faux outrage. You, know what? Outrage. you are the outrage. reason we exist. You are the reason this online movement exists. My black existence is the reason you exist. No, stop bringing race into it. We hate the fact that you people take the moral superiority. But you know what? It's got absolutely everything to do with race. Syrian refugees... Application Absolutely form. Everything take to one do home. With taking a Syrian refugee. I hope you don't get raped because we talk about these serious oh, issues God. and you demean us. I you attack us. I can afford rent for we a get... one-bedroom house, so I, I don't. You know, I don't have the financial means to do that. You probably I'm do sure though you with all to. your money. Oh, all the money I've got. Where yeah. did I get that from? No, no, do we? Well, let let me just sort of. I mean, right you know, you, the point is, it's a bit like a religion. Watching this, you know, it's like it's like watching <laughs> two people who just believe different things. And, no, no, and I, I just wonder whether different. you whether you see the similarity between what you're doing and what ISIS are doing, and that you're sort of there's a radicalisation going are on. Throwing, isn't there? ISIS are throwing gays off buildings. They're attacking no, no, feminists. No, I mean, in terms people of like way, you I mean, are arguments. evil to those people. They want you dead. We're talking about these serious issues, and you sit there with your faux outrage, scuffing when you hear something. You don't like, it's Let's just, just address the point. What I'm saying is, you're organising online. You make mm. videos. You you make these sorts of videos with music, and you cut in pictures of attacks and terrorist sure. attacks and all that kind of stuff. That's exactly what ISIS and Al Qaeda do, and they they prey on vulnerable That's people. That's really not. not and the I wonder issue whether here. The you're preying on similarly vulnerable no, people. I, I'm portraying a message to people who already a lot of people already understand these issues. Some people are on the edge of realizing that there are issues. But to try and compare our movement, and again, I don't associate with these ultra right white supremacists. I'm not one of those. If anything, I'm a paleo libertarian. Yeah, but, but our ideals. Well, you, are you, you, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, let's just establish really that. You, 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 you want. Britain to be essentially white, don't you? Uh, no, I think it should be majority indigenous. Majority it is already yeah, majority yeah. white. Okay, what is the problem? White people make up... Listen, white people make up 20% of the world's mm -hmm. population. The reason why I'm sat in this country today is because Britain came to my country hundreds of years ago. Mm -hmm. That is the exact reason why I'm sat here today. So don't... What's your this, point? This protect me. What's your point? But the reason why I'm here is because you were in my country first. But you and still still and your point? And my point is I have every right to be here in the same way you I would love every to know where you got this idea that I don't think you well, don't have a right to be here. As well, serious as I think you are, I no, think you've got Britain every right to live here. This is Britain is still a majority news. white country. Bob, Bob to me. Britain is still a majority let, white let me country. Just, let, me, let me bring you in. I'm not saying it's not. Let me bring you to the point that actually Jack raised earlier, which is, is it the failure of progressive politics of the left to appeal to young people and to offer them a future that means that some of them, a small number admittedly, but some of them are being seduced by this? 
A small number of people will always be seduced by this. That's just the fact. Well, they just always that, would be. I don't think that there's anything wrong with the left or the progressive not being able to make the case. I think we're living in a very particular time where austerity, people's living standards have been driven, and the left has not been able to be empowered to improve that. That's just a fact. We are at the height of capitalism at the moment, where it's exploit, exploit, and the easiest way to do that is to tell groups of people that other people have the problem. Why have you brought in an application from here for a CBA refugee? What's that got to do with well, anything that we're discussing Let's ignore that. Let, no, 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 but that's to, the let's point. Go to, that's let's exactly go to Angela. the point. Let's, let's just go, go to Angela. Angela. I mean, well, I don't ridiculous. know what you've made of this argument that's been going on in the studio. I, I want to come back to whether this is something that is really powerful and dangerous, as many people would see it, or whether it's just, you know, a bunch of kids who'll grow up eventually and feel a bit embarrassed about how they felt. No, I think it's important not to underestimate it, particularly because in terms of what you were just saying a moment ago about, about the left, I mean, really, the centre has collapsed um, in quite a major way, as we've seen, particularly uh, with the election of Donald Trump. What you have is um, really a kind of exhausted and quite bankrupt uh, centre left and centre right who are uh, kind of progressive neoliberals who really believe in nothing other than the market. Um, and it was quite sad to hear some of the young people in that uh, video uh, because many of them clearly feel, uh, you know, very fatalistic uh, about the future. Uh, that doesn't excuse what they're saying, but, uh, you know, it, it tells us that we are really lacking a vision at this point. Well, we must leave it there. Uh, Angela Nagel, Barbara and Toomey and Jack Buckley, thank you for coming in. I'm sorry if any of those views offended you, but it's Channel 4's job to explore minority views, and that's what we do.